Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Dan Wynn again with the Intentional Entrepreneur Podcast. Uh, I have a very special guest with us today. He is the owner of White Wolf Private Tours based out of San Francisco. He does high-end tours uh, to Yosemite and um, and related areas. And um, he's got a very interesting story about how he got into the private tour company uh, industry. But I don't want to spoil it. Uh, I want to welcome today our very special guest, Dylan Gallagher. Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for having me on. I uh, I appreciate uh, asking me to do this, and I had time, so let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so I, I know we got connected through Hugh, which is, who is a colleague of mine, and uh, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, um, I. I have a wide variety of, of client uh, clientele that I serve, but I've never had someone who was a uh, tour operator. And when we got to talking a little bit more and how you uh, had to pivot your business, uh, given what's happened with the coronavirus pandemic, I wanted to bring you onto the show um, so that you can kind of share a little bit about your experience, you know, maybe having to make that change um, during uh, during a situation like uh, COVID-19 and, you know, maybe the, some of the lessons you learned so far and maybe how it's working out for you. Uh, that's a lot to pack in, I'll pa- uh, <laughs> to unpack, but uh, I can try my best. <laughs> All right. All right. But before it's, we kind um, of get, get into the business side, <laughs> um, maybe tell me a little bit about yourself, maybe a little bit of your background. Uh, okay, so I'm originally from South Carolina, even though I live in San Francisco now. And uh, what I did is in college, I got a degree in engineering. So I did civil engineering, which at the time I enjoyed. But once I got a real job and was sitting behind a desk at age 21, I just felt like it could do more. So I looked around and I found a job as a tour guide and I was based either in New York or Los Angeles. And my job was to show people from other countries, whether it was Germany, Australia, Japan, my job was to show them around the coolest parts of North America. So anywhere you can think of, that's an amazing world-class spot to see, whether it's the Grand Canyon or Yosemite or New York City or Miami or anywhere in between. My job was to show people my own age, you know, 20 to 30s around our country. And I really enjoyed it. So at the time, I didn't think anything about it. I just enjoyed going around the country and hanging out with 50 new friends every single month. And then after a while, I decided that I didn't like someone else planning the tours. I felt like the tours could be better. So whenever you visit another country or even somebody's house, you want to feel comfortable. And there's certain things that you do to make someone feel comfortable. And I felt that the company I worked for was cutting corners. Hmm. So I just said, you know, I'm going to start my own tour company. I'm going to base it out of San Francisco because it was a city I liked. And uh, there's also a lot of great places around here. And uh, that's how I began. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, um, I remember I, I went to go visit uh, Spain. I studied abroad for, for, the, uh, uh, for the summer, if I remember correctly. And, you know, there's, you know, your usual tour spots. But I had the, the opportunity to reach out to some locals. And, you know, they invited me to their house. And they showed me all the spots, like, where the tourists don't go. Right. And so that, that was one of, you know, one of my best experiences, memorable experiences when I, when I visit abroad. And so whenever I have the opportunity to go visit, um, places like that, I try to, I, you know, I don't mind visiting kind of all the touristy spots, but there's some like local insider knowledge that I can't get from, um, you know, TripAdvisor sometimes. And, and, you know, you can find some uh, cool, un on uh, on earth secrets right uh to the local local places so um you know that's 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 awesome that that you've kind of done this uh light slight twist right in in the traditional um um 
tour company. So, um, uh, Orange uh, Orange Sky is one of your first companies. So, tell us a little bit uh, about that and what Wood had offered. So, the way Orange Sky began was sort of by chance. Is when I moved to San Francisco, I would go around. I knew I wanted to tour with people my own age. So this is like age 25, 26. So I just go to all the hostels and I ask people traveling from other countries and I say, hey, like, what are you going to do? Like, where do you want to go? And they would say, oh, I'm going to tour the city or, or, or I'll tour Yosemite. And so by this time, I already had a van. I used all my money and just spent it on a van, just to like a white regular, just, you know, whatever moved. And I went around and I said, uh, they would say Yosemite. I said, how about you just come with me? And they said, ah, they would like make an excuse, of course, because you don't want to get in some random guy's van. So I started building the infrastructure of the company, like the flyers. At the time, I just needed to convince people that, I was a legitimate tour guide, even though I might not have looked it because not every business starts, you know, off with a bang. And I started figuring it out. And one thing I realized is that in America, around the world, we have this stereotype. I think it's a good stereotype is we have spring break and we have the American road trip. So when the company started to be formed naturally, that's what I recreated. So I said, hey, don't follow a tour guide with a flag. Let's just go on a road trip with friends. And by the way, one friend knows everything, knows all the cool spots, knows how to get around everything, has all the camping equipment, has a cooler full of beer. Like, let's go have fun. Just pay this amount. Yeah, that sounds like an awesome time. Now, give you know you shared a little bit of how you were on the tours. Um, do you have a little... Uh, uh, pole with the flag on top that you use to walk around the city no <laughs> the, the trick it's all about the prep sure right so sure whenever you go like let's yeah. say you and i go somewhere i would yeah. say hey dan we're about to go into this place if we get lost like just look for me or else we're going to meet up in 45 minutes of this place like mm -hmm. you know like you're on your own and and people when they travel it's almost with phones and everything you have today that's what you want a lot yeah. of times, not everyone, but a yeah. lot of people just, you know, you want to guide so you mm -hmm. understand where you're going, but then you want to hang out with your family and spend yeah. time with your family. And you don't want to follow this person around a neighborhood. It's, it's, it's a balance. It's yeah. Yeah. It's, sure. it's hard to explain, but that's, uh, that's the gist of it. Right. Now you have this, uh, I guess another offering through white wolf, which uh, I believe was kind of created out of what's happened in, uh, with, with, the, with the pandemic. Can you give, go into a little bit more details, how kind of that came out into fruition? Well, White Wolf was actually before the pandemic, mm -hmm. but it was right before. So uh, the, the difference I saw, and this was, this had to be a business decision I had to make is I could do orange sky and I could do budget travel and offer a great product and I like it, but it's a lot of work. You know, you have a lot of people with you and it's, you know, I'm not 25 anymore. So it's, you know, I'll get older, but everyone else stays young, which that gets difficult as well. So at the same time that orange sky is getting popular, people start calling just based on the reviews of orange sky. So they say, look, we don't want your crappy white van, <laughs> but we want what you know, because it sounds like you're a nice person and that you really want to help people out. Like, can we just have you? And I was like, uh, I guess. And I would do a walking tour or I would do something and it would be a totally different clientele. Hmm. Instead of budget travel, it would be Four Seasons or it would be the Fairmont Hotel or something along those. So then after a couple of those phone calls, I said, okay, I'm doing less work for more money. Maybe this has something here. So I'm still doing Orange Sky at the time. So I create White Wolf and create the brand and I get the vehicle where it's the same, except I dress nicer and, you know, mm -hmm. speak, you know, it's not a spring break road trip. It's right. you know more professional. Right. 
So it takes about a couple of years to get a tour company going, I would say, just because you have to have the writing on the website, the branding, the vehicle, you have to get licensed permits. So it, it takes some time. So I started White Wolf in 2019, just got it rolling, and then the pandemic hit, which shut down both companies. It shut down worldwide travel, which is 90% of the guests. So yeah. that happened, and I just kind of held on for the ride. Now that we're coming out of it, there's only one phone that's ringing, and it's not the orange sky budget travel is the private luxury. So now I had to, I had to make a choice. I said, okay, which one's it going to be? And the pandemic forced me into this one, even though I still like budget travel and you know, it's mm -hmm. the company still exists and is there, but it's all private right now because that's what the market wants. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, you know, I actually was just reading this book uh, called Marketing to the Affluent. And if you are familiar with Dan Kennedy, he's a very popular um, or well-known uh, marketer. But the book is all about, you know, you know, why one, why you should. And and part of it was it's um, there. It, it's almost almost recession proof right now, obviously, with the pandemic that shut down everything. So that kind of contention goes out the window. But they made a pretty good argument that it's like, you know, during a recession, affluent people aren't as affected by economic downturns. Right. So, you know, uh, so like a service like yours can, can, um, can survive or even thrive during a recession because those people who are your clientele aren't affected as much than clients of, um, orange sky. Right. So how have you found, um, um, the clientele, um, you know, pandemic not standing, uh, of, of white wolf versus, um, of, uh, orange sky. It's different, mm -hmm. but I like all of them. So I, yeah. I like people in general mm -hmm. and it's much easier when people are on vacation, you know, you like them even more because they're always in a good mood and, you know, even if things go wrong, they're cool mm -hmm. about yeah. it. But the difference I noticed with the affluent in luxury is, first of all, you got to know your stuff. Like you got to, you know, be professional mm -hmm. and, you know, show that you're charging these rates for a reason, mm -hmm. almost to the point of where you can ride in a Mercedes Benz and you can dress nice, but they're paying for expertise. That's mm -hmm. what, that's what they want. They want that shortcut to the knowledge to where even if, they're not hang gliding in Yosemite. You could still tell them stories about this time where, you know, the expertise. So that's one thing I've noticed. And then another thing is it's good people. Like if you talk to, especially when we're driving to Yosemite, we have time and usually let them, you know, you explain where you are, but a lot of times you get onto small talk. And you say, oh, hey, what's going on? And, you know, and they'll say what they want. Sometimes they don't want to talk. That's fine. But a lot of times you get to know each other. And when they get to know you and they see that you're working really hard and trying your best and that you're a nice person and they want to help you mm -hmm. out. So mm -hmm. they have connections and they say, oh, go here, do this. Or here's this guy. Talk to him. And there's a lot more op opportunities with a wealthier clientele, as opposed to budget. Not that there's not anything wrong. It's just one and done. You know, it's, you go on a tour and you just burn to the next one. And even though you're the same friendship with those ones, it's, you know, the luxury it's, you, you can go a lot deeper and you can create longer relationships, not with, not just with them, but it could be their family. It could be their business. It could be all sorts of things, which is more opportunity for, our business being a mm -hmm. tour company, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know, you talk about, you know, the expertise and, and, and the experience. And I actually asked my wife this cause we, we came back, um, from a three week road trip. We drove actually all the way up to Seattle and then took the coast all the way down. And, you know, we did some shopping, uh, uh, during the trip. And I, I asked, uh, I want to kind of get your, your opinion as a professional in the area. Um, why, why is shopping, during a vacation, a much more memorable experience or, uh, than, 
you know, just shopping when I'm at home and I need to buy, you know, some clothes? Well, it, it depends on the person, mm-hmm. first of all, because some people can't stand shopping. Mm-hmm. But other people that do enjoy shopping, for me personally, when you're on vacation and you go somewhere new, everything's new. So, for example, every time I would go into Montreal or Quebec City, you're in Canada, you have this half French culture, and the styles are going to be way different than they are in San Francisco or South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So it's seeing something new, and then you have time. You know, at home, like, what do you do? You, You sit at work for a while, you go to lunch, do the podcast, go home, hang out with the family, have dinner. Like, where are you going to fit shopping in there? Maybe the weekend, maybe some other, but it's, whereas if you're on a 13 day road trip, it's like, Hey, let's spend a couple hours just at the shopping mall. So that's what I would say is as well. Yeah. Yeah. That, that does. Yeah. I think I totally agree with you. And, and I would add, and what what my wife said was kind of very poignant. It says it was, it, it was the is actually connecting the experience, right? So like you're on vacation, you're buying this dress, you're buying this shirt, and you're connecting, you know, what you're buying to to being on vacation, which is normally a very happy and very, very time. So there's an association with the particular item of clothing. So when you back against, oh yeah, I bought this on where we were here, and we had a remember that trip. We had a very good time. Yeah. And why not? You know, like if you can, yeah, it's, I do it as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, for those of you have, who haven't seen, uh, uh, um, you had a chance to visit Dylan's uh, website, uh, you can just uh, Google white wolf tours, but you offer a very high end experience. So when I grew up, uh, going to Yosemite was staying at the cabins and, uh, having, uh, food at the cafeteria. But I know you provide a totally different experience to your uh, to your to your clients. Can you share a little bit about how you show Yosemite to your clients? Well, it depends on the client, mm-hmm. and that's mainly what we do. Because if your family gives us a call and says, "Hey, we want to go to Yosemite. We have a little baby," you know that's different than a retired couple who's seventy five who has bad knees. So right away, when you call, we say, okay, what do you want to do? And people will say, oh, I want to do this, this, this. They're usually not from here. If they were, then they wouldn't need us. So most of their research is done online. And it doesn't matter how much you research online. You're never going to know what someone that's there knows. So we say, okay, name what you want to do. And they say, oh, we want to do this and the mist trail and we want to go up Half Dome in four hours. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then we say, okay, here's what's possible for your time frame. And because you've done so many tours, you see what fits and what doesn't. And then based on the mm-hmm. person, you know what to offer them or what not to offer them. So, for instance, if someone is coming from South America and they're marathon runners and I see they're very laid back, I'll ask them a question. I'll say, okay, well, do you want to see the real Yosemite? And most people will say, oh, yeah, of course, the real. And I'll say, all right, well, the real Yosemite, the only way you're going to do that is if you hike into the wilderness, just like John Muir did, which means using the tree as a restroom, sleeping on the ground (laughs) in a tent. And that's luxury, right? Like when you think about it, like as it's this weird juxtaposition that says, Look, you might see online that Yosemite is crowded, but if you do Yosemite correctly, you can hike to these amazing places with nobody around. You just have to know when to go and which route to take and know someone that has all the equipment and everything taken care of so you save the time as well. So you're not packing and doing all these, mm-hmm. you know, designing a water filter or whatever. It's like, no, man, it's all here. It's all right. So that's one example of a tour we offer but then if it's that retired couple that's 75 that can't walk very far it's a totally different tour so then we say okay you're probably going to stay in hotels you're going to need easy trails and because we know the place we say okay we're going to do this 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 and even if we drive in and something's completely different road construction rock fall 
we know how to get around it because we know just mm-hmm. because we've been there so many times and we say, Hey, Ernest and Gretel, let's, let's go around this way and, you know, really see. And that's, that's kind of how we do it. So it's, it's hard to explain. You say luxury, but it's, you know, sometimes we're camping, sometimes right. we are in high end experiences, but the point is you match Yosemite to that mm-hmm. person. Right. It's probably more like a, uh, maybe a bespoke um, tour, right? It's, it's what you want and what your, maybe your abilities are. And we can tailor around to what you would like to experience That's Yosemite it. at. Yeah. Right? In private, nobody else is. And the connection to San Francisco, mm-hmm. um, because you do have companies that go from San Francisco um, very, very rarely do you have companies that go from San Francisco and hike hmm. in the back country. So that's okay. one, uh, because we set it up, we try and do it exactly how we would want a tour, but in our case, it would be flying to Europe, right? Hmm. So, so imagine right. you and I flew into Europe and we're there for a week and we're in Paris and someone comes up to you and says, Hey, do you want to go to the Alps? We can go hike these mountains and go right away. We say, oh, we don't have the tent. We don't have, it's like, cool. I got it. Everything. Mm-hmm. So you want to go to the Alps three days? You know, I got the tent. I got the vehicle. All you got to do is pay and show up at the right time and everything else is taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I think is the, the new era of touring. That's where I think it's going to go as opposed to nickel and diming people is mm-hmm. just, you know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. You, 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 you brought up something I just thought of because I, I went to go visit Olympic National Park recently and it's a, it's, it's a beautiful place, um, but it's obviously very far from where I'm at. And it's like, I, I'd love to camp here, but I don't want to have to fly up to Seattle with all my stuff and then mm. drag, you know, rent a car big enough to have all that stuff. And then, and then, and then, you know, obviously you got the drive, but uh, it's, it's, it's awesome that you know, companies like yours offer like, Hey, just tell me what you do and really just show up. All right, we have all the equipment and we'll make it a, as memorable experience as, as you, uh, as you want it to be. Yeah. And we're, we're still new. So mm-hmm. we go and, and we find it's almost an advantage in a way because people feel like it's, they're part of the beginning, you know, because mm-hmm. they see it and they go, wow, this is like, you guys are really on to something here. And, you know, we'd love to grow faster, but there's only, you know, so many pandemics that come through that kind of limit what we do. And sometimes we got to start over and it's, you know, all these, you know, dodgeballs are thrown at us and we're just kind of going side to side, but we're still moving forward and we're still standing. So, yeah, it's, it's cool. Um, Where, where do you expect, or what do you think you want to take your company to be as far as, you know, size and, and, and number tours? Uh, maybe maybe five years or even ten years from now. Uh, I'm just gonna go a day at a time now. Okay. Yeah. Um, before I had all these lofty plans like, oh yeah, we're gonna make X amount by X, and going through this whole pandemic was just getting thrown in the garbage disposal. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I'm beat up uh, mentally, physically a little bit. Like the numbers of the company are beat up, and we're just opening a, a month ago. So we opened on June first again and it's we're just now getting into the swing of things and the we're noticing that the psychology of travel is a little bit different now as well and not a lot it's just changing a little bit and and we're just kind of getting on our feet and getting in the motions again and we just need to get that moving smooth before we're like oh yeah we want to be fifty thousand employees we're just you know one day at a time one tour at a time and we're just we just do the best we can and go and we're just we're just gonna hold on for the ride however big or small or I'm so sorry I can't answer your question it's just too soon man <laughs> yeah no no I pre- I, pre- I told I, I totally understand and you know after what 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 you've gone through you know it's you got cherish every day right uh, that you got and and make yeah. um, we make made it we made it right right okay so um what's what's um What's the most outlandish request or crazy request or out of, out of, you know, out of left field requests you've ever had for one of your tours? 
the most outlandish is usually when it's too much for one person to do. And it's, it's mm -hmm. not, oh, I got a better one. I got a better one. We got a call one time. So we run trips to Yosemite. Mainly, we do tours of San Francisco as well, but we do trips of Yosemite. And our, our tagline is, uh, we want to show you Yosemite the correct way. You know, experience Yosemite the right way. Now, there's a lot of different things to unpack there. So first is the right way for you, but then the second is the right way for Yosemite. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like we're trying to be the buffer between the city and the park uh, because the park's a very small town and everyone's really nice and mm -hmm. but it's also world renowned and you don't want it to get exploited you don't want you know so we have to kind of push back the city and say no like there's certain things we're not going to do just because it's disrespectful to yosemite in our opinion mm -hmm. we're not saying nobody can do it it's just our personal thing so we got a call one time i forgot from who it was maybe a travel concierge or someone and they were uh, representing some royalty, some prince, some thing, or I, I forgot exactly what, what it was. But money was no object, okay? Which is fine with us. Cool. What do you got? And they said, okay, we want to rent an RV, like a big, like, you know, I forgot what the name is. I think Class A, like the big one. Yeah, ones. yeah. We want to go up to Yosemite and camp, camp in quotation marks, <laughs> in the RV. It's okay fine we want butler service and we want you know all these things all around and when it starts getting into that it's it's like look we like you guys we understand that you'll pay as much money as it takes but there's certain things that that's not what yosemite is about because if you ask people in california not everyone but if you ask around to the people that go year after year it's not about an rv with butler service even though it's mm -hmm. possible, it, that's just not what it is. You know, it's about hiking. It's about maybe getting away from technology. It's about appreciating what's around you, maybe appreciating those who are around you. You know, nature, like yeah. one of the most beautiful places on earth. Like that's what it's. Um, so we said we'd take them camping and take them other things, but we're not doing the butler. We're not doing like, sorry, maybe one day, but not this day. Yeah, no, it's I, I mean, there's yeah. nothing I can do about it. Like, <laughs> yeah, and and I, I love the fact that you know it's it's you're you're kind of being congruent as to you know what the national parks and Yosemite is is supposed to be about, right? It's supposed to be about you know enjoying what is 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 on the earth with without kind of the man made um amenities you know bathrooms and restaurants and hotels aside right it's just you know there's, there's this magical place on earth where it's like your your mind just transforms it's like a whole sometimes i can't believe this place exists uh you know you know and, and uh, not to interrupt you okay. but after this whole pandemic we're appreciating it a lot more so whereas before we'd see it and maybe we get the gram shot and say, oh, cool, update my, my profile photo and we're good. But after this reality check that we've had this last year, we're going up and we're saying like, wow, like I'm glad I'm able to to come here and do this. And, and we're glad to even be able to show it and somehow scrape a living together uh, to be able to do that, you know? Yeah, you know, I, that I, you just hit it right in the head because – you know, we uh, we uh, we actually ended up picking up an annual pass, national park pass, and and it's one of those things. Where I was like, well, we bought it, so we got to go use it. <laughs> gotta go use it, yeah. Because yeah. you never know; it's you know anything right. can happen. So might as well have some fun, you know. Yep, yep. Cool. All right. Hey, we're kind of uh, getting to the ends. Is thank you so much uh, uh, for your time. But before we kind of skid out of here, um, we're gonna ask you some quick fire questions. And about about being a business owner, being an entrepreneur, and you just answer the first thing that pops up in your head. All right, go for it. Okay, all right. Um, who do you look up to? Uh, I would look up to anybody that has something that they want to do that keeps going for it. Hmm. I would okay. say that's uh, that's kind of a general answer, but 
Yeah. You know, go for what you want in life. It could be, it could be anything, but just go and keep going. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, what's the best business advice you've ever received? Uh, never give up. You know, everyone can run a business when it's easy, but when it gets hard, that's who you see who actually wants to do it or the ones that, that maybe want to do something else, yes. which is fun. Right. Uh, what's the best business business book you've ever read? Uh, it might not be a business book. It might be on the line, but it's uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People mm -hmm. by Carnegie, if you've yep. read that. Um, the tips most of us know, but the writing is so well written. You know, he writes how he speaks and just, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to write like that is a true gift. Yeah, that, that is certainly a timeless classic for any yeah. for any person. You know, that, that's that's something everything every person should read. Yeah. And we know, but we forget. That's right. The, yeah. Right. Right. There's a there's a distinction between knowing what to do and then actually actually doing. It. And some say it's like, you know, if you don't if you don't do do or take action based on your knowledge, it's all that knowledge is kind of worthless. Yeah. And, and, and not to slow down your rapid fire yeah. questions, but that book got me reading. I didn't, really? I didn't, I didn't read much before I was an engineer, you know, I was math. Right. And yeah. so I read that book and I said, Whoa, like, you know, and then I, that was the gateway into all the business books, all, all those things. And it's, I'm very grateful for that book. So. Okay. Um, next question is, um, um, if you can do one thing over again, what would it be? Oh, that's a tough one. You want to do stuff over, but everything that happens shapes your character and shapes who you are, even if it's something bad. And the bad, when it happens, it's just, you feel terrible. But I think in the long run, it makes you a better person. So, you know, even, even all this, even the pandemic, like it's not that I had a choice with that, mm -hmm. makes a better business today i think so i wouldn't change anything i just say it's it's how it goes and that's the that's how you learn in life all right and uh lastly um what's the biggest challenge in your business today staying open man <laughs> uh now it's adapting to what's changing um mm -hmm. the psychology of the public is changing but we have an advantage because we're so small Mm -hmm. And we're also guides. So the guides know what's happening in the industry first. So we can change and adapt before anyone else can. It takes the larger companies a lot longer to change. So we just go day by day, man. It's, it's always a challenge and it's starting to be the fun part. Even, you know, when bad stuff happens, it's just like, Oh, great. Let's yeah. see what else bad happens today. And, you know, you just laugh eventually yeah. and just, just go. So it's staying open, man. Yeah. We made it. So. All right. Last question. It's not a rapid fire question, but it's something I've, I, I kind of just thought of. And, um, can I make the assumption you, you enjoy traveling at, on a personal, personal basis? I do. Okay. What what was it like to turn that, that hobby or passion into a business? Uh, because I, I, I remember, you know, for a lot of people that they, they'll say like, oh yeah, just, um, uh, you know, just do what you love. Right. And then, you know, have ever, ever have to work a, a day in your life. But I do know for some particular people, it's like, well, if they turn what they like into a, a venture or, or have some business aspect, then it becomes a job. Right. So like a, a friend of mine, he, he really he enjoys mountaineering and he does that as a hobby. But he he doesn't want to take people with him, you know, for pay, uh, uh, mountaineering with him. So what was it? A you know, did you have that particular issue? If you did, you know, did you break through, or is it just like, hey, I can't believe I'm getting paid for this? Yeah, it's it's uh, so if I had to, and I think this goes for a lot of business owners. If I had to choose, my motivation is my motivation is to help people. Like that's, you know, what it is. And I think it, it goes across a lot of business owners. So you're, you're helping people as well, but it might be in law. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, the part is helping people get better at something. Mm -hmm. 
So when it comes to travel, for me, it was being a good host, mm -hmm. almost like representing our country correctly, right? Mm -hmm. Because Americans might get a bad rap around the world because who knows what you might see on the news or, you know, and we have such a different country no matter where you go. And I have the advantage of being able to see all of that and even grow up in a different part of the country, which is the complete opposite of San Francisco. So I have the advantage of understanding really well where I come from. So when someone comes and finds us as a tour company, yeah, we're doing travel and yeah, like mountaineering and hiking, and but it's about introducing someone to your home correctly but instead of an apartment, this is our country. And you say, okay, this is America. This is Yosemite. Let's, let's do it this way. So that's me. All right. I love it. I love it. Hey, uh, thanks again, uh, Dylan Gag Gallagher with White Wolf Tours. Uh, man, if you want to see Yosemite the right way, reach out to him. And so where can we find you? So the best is just to email, uh, email or call us. Uh, if you just search White Wolf Tours online, it'll come up. And we're super small, so when you call, it's just going to come to me. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask, I'll say, hey, what's up? What do you need? And just go from there. Awesome, awesome. Hey, thanks again, Dylan, uh, uh, Dylan for your time. Uh, I learned a lot. And, and um, you know, hopefully uh, one day I'll make it back up to San Francisco and, and you can show us around. Man, hopefully I didn't talk too much, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. Hey, thanks again for your time and we'll talk soon. All right. Thanks a lot, man. All right. Take it easy.